don't know how well this is going to record. This phone's kind of weird and the memory's so so not there. I'd use my other phone that cost me more money, but it's even worse making the video. It cuts off in five seconds flat. This one at least lets you go, I don't know, a couple minutes before it's going to cut me off. But it's Wednesday, February 26th, 2020. I'm here in my little alcove. I don't know if you can even see it. There's walls that go all the way around this transformer. Metal transformer for a big building right here next door. I don't know if you can see it or not. There we go. Got a little bit better than light. Uh, at night, I dress with the hoodie on over top. And then I don't know if you can see it or not. But there's a vest here. And that this netting has all sorts of pockets in the front. And then that way, if anybody were to try to take something, they'd literally have to fill me up at night to get to it. Then I have this day pack, $8 at Walmart. It just basically has extra clothes. I have a pair of shorts and another t-shirt and a couple pairs of underwear and a couple pairs of socks in here and that's literally all I have. Then I have, of course, the sleeping bag and an empty bucket right now. It doesn't have anything in it. The bucket comes in handy for hitchhiking and then it's only five bucks and then if I need to go store my sleeping bag somewhere during the daytime, and I'm going to be away from it. If I put my sleeping bag in a bucket, it'll keep it mostly waterproof. So I won't get the sleeping bag all nice and wet when I have to come back to it later on. And that's how I roll on the street. For those people who want to know. I don't know if this is still recording or not. This phone acts weird. I think it is. This is a it is anyway. Sorry for the bad picture quality. My kind of crappy videos lately with the picture quality and the sound and everything. I need to get a better phone, which I'll work on doing and expediting. Um, just thinking about uh, Friday, I'm going to go to Detroit. I have a couple foreigners, fleet owners, that, that uh, have their own vans and their own company and their own authority. And they're putting on, you know, extra vans with extra drivers. And I'm kind of wary about going that route, you know, because it's like borderline to the Russians and stuff that go really, really small. Amounts of money, you know, like 35 cents a mile or something, which, tch, when you do the math, you're getting ripped off compared to the bigger company drivers, but I may have to figure on doing that for a while, because either way, I looked into insurance, and either I get my own camper van, personal van, and I don't do expediting with, I just live in it, but my insurance rate would be through the roof again, because of that 15 mile over the speed limit speeding ticket I had two and a half years ago, and that, the only way around that to lower the rates for their personal or, com or commercial insurance rates is to drive for six months either way. So at the very least, I've got to go six months with someone and get the rates lower. And then the bigger companies like Load 1 and Bolt and stuff like that are saying they might be able to work with me like down the line in September if it doesn't work out with somebody the private. But at the same time, I could go with a private guy who's got his own company, his own authority. And depending on how he, they do the loads, you know, I might actually do better than a bigger company drivers do. They might keep us busier. I don't know. I, I, I haven't done the private route before. I've done the bigger companies with Bolt. You know, the bigger company signed on driver. So this will be a different way to experience expediting, I guess. But I'm kind of weary on doing that specifically because it's a crapshoot. In terms of the trucking business, there's all sorts of slime balls out there that are, you know, everybody's trying to get their bottom dollar you know if the fleet owners could make every driver drive for 10 cents a mile they you know and drivers were happy with it they'd take it you know because they'd be able to take all the profit that comes from out of it, out of it. so there's good fleet owners and then there's fleet owners who quite frankly will try to push every last cent away from the driver that they can and I don't want to get hooked up with somebody like that but you know I'll just have to see what the contract offers and sign go by contract so I at least have something I don't really want to sign on to like a flat 30 se 35 cents a mile rate for every single mile because that, the problem with doing that is if, especially if they do their own loads, they could be over here brokering the load for a dollar and 10 cents a mile and then the driver only gets the 35 cents no matter what. So it gets well below 50% of it. I'd much rather at the very least get feel out first and then split 50-50 on whatever the load goes for. But again, if you sign on with an independent private person like that, unless they have their own third-party dispatch that they, they go through to where they can't control loads, you are technically taking that risk of being the driver, doing all the work, and then basically getting screwed on the deal if you take like a flat 35 cents a load or whatever. So I don't know. I did the math and the numbers, and that's where the numbers would affect you. But at the same time, 
Then if somehow you got a load that was like 65 cents a mile and you were still guaranteed 35 cents of it, you know, but I'm sure they don't drop their profit margin down that far to do it if it makes sense to anybody who's out there expediting. I do have to say, even with the shadow play and everything on this video, it looks kind of cool. Looking forward to Friday. The plan is going to be go there, check out load one, and Expedis, I think, in tri hours, and go down to Bolt Express. Maybe Road Runner. I don't know. You know, try all the bigger companies first, or give them calls on Friday and tell them I'm there in Detroit and see what I can find. Then, uh, th if nothing else, there's an $8 or $10 Greyhound bus ticket down to Toledo that I could take to six different buses during the day. You know, it's pretty easy commuting right there between Detroit and Toledo. I can go down to Toledo and hit up Bolt Express and all that. And if that all fails or I can't find independent people or whatever to drive through four or whatever, then I'm, you know, going to have to check myself into a homeless shelter there because the temperature is just way too cold. I looked at it last week. There were like 35 as a high and 25, sometimes even down to 15 as a low in the Detroit area. And it's just way too much of a risk to be out here on the streets in a sleeping bag. And the crazy thing about it is I have the sleeping bag and that bucket, but partly because of the plane and I don't want to cause take the time to pay an extra 20 or 30 bucks for a carry-on you know this is a personal item so I can take that on and call it my personal item and that's it anything extra would be a carry-on in size and like that bucket size or even a sleeping bag size you know the sleeping bag itself only costs 15 or 20 bucks so I pay 20 bucks to ship it with me it's just stupid and then it's worn down Walmart sleeping bags only last so long they last like a month at a time here's the zipper falling off and they're kind of the Walmart bags are kind of designed to go to like a weekend concert and that's it you know if you're gonna go buy a sleeping bag last second go to a concert and throw it away that's pretty much what they're designed for this one lasted yeah, I don't know, a little over a month maybe 40 days that I've had it if that maybe if that I don't remember when I bought it whenever I left Sky Harbor I, I managed to stay in Sky Harbor's airport here in Phoenix for like almost three weeks before I got kicked out of there for not having a plane ticket so that is going to be an interesting deal tomorrow too if I run into the same cop, but at this time I have a verified plane ticket, so I don't think they can do anything. But he threatened jail last time, so I don't know. That'll be interesting. But anyway, I'm not going to take the worn out sleeping bag and everything, because I mean, 15 or 20 bucks, I can go buy another one if I had to. But the thing is, I'm going to go to a shelter anyway, it's just way, way too cold. I hate having to go to a shelter service like that. But, you know, in the winter time, it's worth it to deal with potential bed bugs or people giving you a cold because of the prox close proximity of everybody or people trying to steal your stuff. People trying to steal my stuff won't be so bad of a deal now because I got that vest. And all my personal stuff will be underneath my hoodie. So, they, like I said, they'd have to fuel me up to get to it. I did learn that lesson in Hawaii the hard way when I lost my bag. But anyway, I'm also going to set back 50 or 60 bucks and buy me a decent four pocket like a harder winter coat that you can buy up there in Detroit in the colder weather state in the four season state I'm not even going to bother trying to look for a four season coat here in Phoenix because they just don't sell them because they don't have that kind of weather so I have to wait to go to Walmart up there and see or I might go to a thrift store and see if I can find it cheaper but I will definitely need more than a hoodie and a little fleece jacket because that's literally all I had and if I had a choice in the matter I'd probably just stay down here or someplace for two months warmer weather and I'd actually prefer to go to Hawaii if I had the money and the choice and the time to do it if they drop the charge, if the lawyer would call like tomorrow and drop the charge for down here in Avondale and I was a free man, I would just say screw it and go to Hawaii for a couple months and stay warm. But because of I have that boiling in the back, you know, that I may or may not end up having to pay that off and all that crap. I've got to get to work somehow rather than stay here and fight the trial. And I'm going to possibly come back and do the trial thing. But the problem with doing that is there's, you can, four options to come out of jail. I remember we'll come out of that court process. Either they'll drop the charges, which is what everybody wants, you know, that's what I would like, but that would, I'd prefer, because then it'd just be over with. Or I could plead out, take the $500 fine deal that they offered, which I don't know for whether or not. Or I could fight it in court and win, or I could fight it in court and lose. But that's your four options when it comes to the system. So, the thing is, if I fight it in court and win, obviously it's like before, you know, if the DA dropped the charges, it would just be done. Free man, but then... If I fight it and lose, I can face up to a potential of like two months in jail, which would screw up at my extra job if I had one and the whole works. 
So I don't know yet for sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to end up pleading out on it or if I'm going to take it all the way to trial or what. Obviously, if I don't find work up exp expediting in the next week or two, I held back my state tax return that's coming. And I'm going to use that for a plane ticket back down here. And obviously, if I have to make the effort to come all the way back down here, I'm going to just wait and go through the trial and see because I have all the time in the world to do it. But for now, I've got to try to do something for myself because I'm tired of living this boring-ass life. I want to get back to making money. Like and subscribe, leave comments. I'll upload this at the airport tomorrow while I'm waiting for the flight. My flight leaves the next following day at 6 a.m. on Friday morning. And I will see you in Detroit.